The Republican legislative crusade against the LGBTQ community is continuing at full speed, with the ACLU recording nearly 500 anti-LGBTQ bills this year alone proposed. They're not all passed, many of which specifically pertain to transgender Americans. Now, so far this year, 70 anti-trans bills have been passed nationwide. This week, Missouri became the latest state to do so. On Wednesday, its Republican-controlled legislature passed a bill that would create a near-total ban on gender-affirming care for minors, regardless of parental consent. consent. Missouri's Republican governor has expressed support for the legislation and is expected to sign it into law. One Missouri family raising a 16-year-old transgender son had this to say about the bill. This is um, medical care that is our son's doctors say he needs, that we as parents think he needs, and that he wants. The path that my child was on before we got to the gender center was the wrong path. And it's devastating to know that other kids aren't going to have access to that same health care. Now, Missouri officials on Wednesday also passed legislation that would require schools to force transgender students to compete on athletic teams that reflect the sex that they were assigned at birth. As a result of that legislation, a board member of one of Missouri's largest school districts, through tears, announced that she will not only be resigning from her position, it's also leaving the state completely to protect her transgender child. As a family, we have made the difficult but necessary decision that Missouri is no longer a safe place for us. Now, both of those bills would give Republican legislatures, uh, legislators an outsized impact on the daily lives of transgender kids in Missouri. It would give Republican politicians more power than their parents to determine the best way to protect and care for their own kids. What if it was your child? Because all of these children are somebody's children. There are kids and families that are harmed by this Republican frenzy. Our next two guests are both parents of children who identify as transgender or non-binary. Debbie Jackson and Rabbi Daniel Brogard are part of the community fiercely fighting these bills in Missouri and elsewhere. Today, Rabbi Brogard wrote, whipping up fear and hatred against trans people, trans kids in particular, is not a sideshow in today's GOP. It's the lifeblood of their coalition. They're waging a war on democracy, and the bodies of trans kids are what they've chosen for their battlefield. Joining us now, Rabbi Daniel Bogard of the Central Reform Congregation in St. Louis. He's a parent of a nine-year-old transgender boy. Also with us, Debbie Jackson, a member of the Human Rights Campaign's Parents for Transgender Equality Council. She's the parent of Avery, a 15-year-old non-binary child. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for uh, being with us. Rabbi, uh, I, I just want to read a, a, another of your tweets in which you said, because this is interesting, it follows on the conversation I just had with Jasmine Crockett. You said, I really believe that most of the Republicans, uh, Republican electeds genuinely don't like these bills targeting trans kids. They've just realized that torturing my kid and my family is winning politics for them. The base loves it, and the press covers the story as the debate over trans kids. So first of all, for the benefit of the press, for the benefit of us in the media, tell me what's wrong with the way we're covering this. You know, look, what's happening is the Republican Party is waging a war on trans kids. It really feels like they are waging here in Missouri a war on my family. And then so often what happens in the press is this is treated like a question. Let's talk about this whole trans thing that's going on without centering the harm and the pain that is being caused to kids, right? Just kids who are trying to be themselves, who are trying to live their lives, and families who are trying to follow the best advice of their doctors. Uh, so when the press centers the debate rather than centering the harm, it, it continues this cynical policy of the Republicans who are counting on it. They're counting on the fact that they can rile up their base with anti-trans rhetoric and get questions from the other side. Debbie, to the extent that this is political uh, and that maybe uh, the rabbi's right, that, that, that this, this uh, activates and, and, and uh, animates a base, you're, you're at the, the heart of it. You, you and your family are at the heart of this. How does it feel from your perspective? Um, well, thank you for having us on tonight. Yes, we have been at the heart of it. I started my advocacy publicly about a decade ago, and for eight years, I have been going back and forth because we're on the Kansas City line with Kansas. Um, for eight years, I've been going back and forth to the state legislatures in both states, sometimes for hearings on the same day in both states, just literally driving back and forth, begging people to acknowledge our kids and that they are just a regular part of the community. Um, it's painful to me, as you said, um, they frame it as a debate 
or an issue. And um, I'm sure the rabbi will agree with me that our children's gender is not an issue. Hmm. And it's, it's not a debate. Their existence is not up for debate. And that's what we've been trying to say for so long. Trans people exist. And we're tired of them being, being used by these organizations that have such deep pockets, like the Heritage Foundation and the Alliance Defending Freedom. Um, this is not something that's homegrown. This is all completely manufactured because they know that division and, and bigotry sells. Rabbi, I want to just play for our audience. We were talking about your nine-year-old son. You have a 12-year-old son um, as well who testified against uh, an anti-trans sports bill um, and, and referred in it uh, in the testimony to your other son. Let's listen. It's been years that you have been trying to take things away from people that I love who are just little kids. They're not competing for a scholarship or a job, and most of the time they're not even in the tournament. They're just trying to have fun, which they can't do since they're trying to pass these bills. This has affected my brother because now he gets scared that he will not be able to do what he loves. Rabbi, talk to me about that um, because you say we're not, you know, we could do a better job of centering the harm. Let's talk about that. You, you have another son who's not trans um, who is really hurt by the fact that his brother's getting targeted by these, these pieces of legislation. Yeah, my 12-year-old has been going down for years now to testify in support of his brother, in support of uh, another good friend of his who's trans. But the other background piece here is my 12-year-old goes because we don't allow our 9-year-old to go to testimony days because the things that our sitting legislators say about our kids are so vile and they are so hurtful that, that we just don't want our child to hear that. I've been in the room when sitting senators have asked 12-year-olds what their genitals look like. We've had legislators offer uh, to kids, you know, do you need to be taken away from your parents? Do you need to be protected from them who are trying to trans you? We'll have people in committee hearings say that the reason that our kids are trans is because of mental illness or because we didn't love them enough as parents. And it is heartbreaking and we refuse to let our nine-year-old hear those things. You know, he lives in this perfect bubble of love and acceptance. We're genuinely the only bullies in his life work for the Missouri government. That's wild. Um, Debbie, do you, do you share the rabbi's view that, that most people probably wouldn't have come to these sort of anti-trans views on their own if this wasn't a, a sort of a whipped up frenzy? Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. When people actually do get to know our families and they see that we are just their, their neighbors, their friends, um, that we go to the same grocery stores, we're in the schools, we're sitting in congregations on, uh, you know, and worshiping with them, they, they recognize that there is nothing frightening about us, that we are not um, abusers, that we are loving families. And um, what really disturbs me is that this is government interference and overreach in such an egregious way. But because they're using this dehumanizing language, they make it sound like um, the, the names of the bills that they, the, they need to protect children from something. It makes it sound reasonable. But when they take a step back and the people in the community get to know our families, they realize that it's anything but reasonable. And we need them to understand once they have done this to trans people, they will need another scapegoat that's mm -hmm. out there and they will come for another community next. And I appreciate that you have had on people talking about the extreme violence because there are things they could be doing to actually protect children across this country right now, today and they're not doing it. Instead, they're trying to distract and put a focus on this marginalized community of people just because there aren't enough people who know a trans person. So I think what you said there really crystallizes it, uh, Debbie. And Rabbi, I think this is interesting because Debbie said, you know, once they've done with this, they'll, they'll go to some other marginalized group. You know about this, right? You know that you can whip up a frenzy about anybody. You can other anybody in this country. This just seems to be the turn uh, for, for, for trans people in this country. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. You know, the, there's that classic poem, yep. uh, God forbid, about the Holocaust. The first they came for this group and, and we did nothing because we weren't that group. And, you know, I always I always hoped and believed that this was prescriptive, that that told us how to behave and, and pointed us towards a better future. And I tell you, living here in Missouri, living with a trans kid where our government is at war with us, where we feel like we need to protect our kid from our state. I'm desperately scared that this is descriptive of how humans live and how humans respond. And it's terrifying being here.